Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Curley. Good evening. Good afternoon. <laughs> Let me try again. In 2003, Michael Waltrip won the reined shortened Daytona 500 with an average speed of 133 miles per hour. A few days earlier on the same Daytona track, Jackie Kelly averaged 168 miles an hour. Now you know somebody who's going to win a matrix would go fast, and you'd expect her to beat the five guys she raced against that day. But here's all you need to know about Jackie Kelly. After she got in the car, she looked up and asked, how do you drive a stick shift? <laughs> Throughout her career, Jackie has always found third gear and floored it from there. That spirit, that spirit carried her to a top agency job without previous agency experience. Over the last 25 years, Jackie has figured out how to navigate and work through four major media companies with their excruciatingly pressured and distinctive cultures. They are USA Today, Yahoo, Martha Stewart Living, and now IPG's media brands. And yet look at her. She has no lines and almost always wears a radiant smile. Who else in media can say that in the last decade? Hell, who else in media can say that in the last 10 minutes? I've been fortunate enough to have worked with Jackie since she was an intern and have watched her soar to her current role as CEO with responsibility for everything that touches clients, including the tools, the technologies, and the services. Jackie grew up in rural Colorado. She was in 4-H and, of course, was a multiple champion, raising steers and baking, an ideal foundation for a career in advertising sales. <laughs> At Pepperdine, she got interested in communications and became disarmingly insightful about deciphering people's thought patterns. In the business world, she translated that into two of the greatest skills, being one step ahead and championing a laser-like focus on results. Jackie has always seemed a mile ahead or 35 miles an hour faster than the competition. The most revealing piece of information I can tell you is that whenever she has gotten a new job or been promoted, her colleagues said, of course, there's no one better and no one else we'd really rather work with. A big reason for that is her selfless and determined efforts to help other people succeed. She's really that wonderful person who inspires and makes the workplace and our world better. She's someone you trust to deliver both professionally and personally. She's a wife, a mother, and a business leader who is very seriously devoted to trying to open doors for children who need help. And while she values being respected as a business leader, the title she values most is mom, regardless of the hours or the demands. Her soulmate and treasure is daughter Ashley. A long time ago, I stopped trying to figure out how Jackie Kelly does it all and does it so well and just enjoy what she creates. I am honored to present her as a New York Women in Communications Matrix winner, Jackie Kelly. <laughs> well, thank you. I, uh, Tom and I did meet when I was 21 years old, five years ago. and. I had nothing but ambition and hope, and you matched that with uh, belief and direction, so thank you so much. I have come to this lunch for almost my entire career and never thought I would ever earn a place on this stage, so I am humbled to say the least. I was asked to share a bit about um, learnings I've had, and I thought I would give three somewhat contrary or not obvious um, pieces of advice. So with laugh lines to prove it, here we go. First is learning is better than climbing. Second, celebrate the tough stuff. And third, and contrary to popular opinion, it is never just about business. So learning is better than climbing. I think the idea of climbing ladders is fundamentally flawed, and Mindy alluded to this a bit as well. Some of my most rewarding experiences have come from the most unexpected places. 
For example, I left USA Today after 18 years. I had reached the most senior advertising role, and I left to be an individual contributor at Yahoo. That is code word for no authority and expected to influence. <laughs> I left almost two decades of equity. I left a huge office that was bigger than my apartment at the time. It had a bathroom and a shower. Do you remember those days? I never used that shower, but it was there. Um, and I joined Yahoo, and I walked into the office on the first day, and I had a cubicle with a pole right down the middle of it. It was so small that I had to figure out how to maneuver my chair just right so I could actually get out of the cube. But I wouldn't change it for the world because the learnings were significant. So two takeaways from that experience. One is pick people, not jobs. I've been blessed with a winning streak of picking amazing people to work for. It started with Tom, and we have six, had 16 years together. It includes Wynda Millard, who I left to join that cubicle uh, to be at Yahoo, and then followed her to Martha Stewart, where I learned so much and would not trade it for the world. And then there's Matt Seiler, who, uh, after we had a, what was supposed to be a 30-minute breakfast that turned, or lunch, which turned into a three-and-a-half-hour meeting, asked me to run an agency after I told him I believed agencies had been a barrier to my progress for most of my career. So thank you for having the courage to pick me. Um, and then Nick Bryan, Michael Roth, so many people at IPG and Media Brands, and the clients that I have the gift to also call friends, and all of you who lock arms with me every day to serve them. Thank you so much. My second learning um, that in is included in that is stop climbing and start stretching. So our hologram, Sheryl Sandberg, um, says in her new book, uh, Lean In, that we should stop climbing the ladder and we should treat our careers like a jungle gym. And I think she's absolutely right. I have gone places simply where I could learn. It had nothing to do with the title, it had nothing to do with the job description, it had to do with learning. And I think that guarantees us far more fulfillment than climbing. Second, celebrate the tough stuff. The Irish tell a story about a man that arrives at the pearly gates and asks to be let in, and Pete, St. Peter says, of course, just show me your scars. The man says, I have no scars, to which St. Peter replies, what a pity. Was there nothing worth fighting for? Well, I am lucky because I bear scars. Some of them are things that I definitely found worth fighting for, probably more so than some of you would like me to have fought for them. But I also have them by virtue of circumstances that I would not have chosen, but have turned out to be some of the most precious gifts in my life. I believe that these moments can be defining and actually demonstrate our capacity for extraordinary resili resilience and ultimately, and unfortunately always in hindsight, gratitude. Lean into these times and use them as ways to fall forward in powerful ways. And then finally, it is never just about business. And as Martha would say, that is a very good thing. I'm in, it's impossible to separate the human element from business. And on the back of strong relationships focused on mutual gain, I believe profits will follow. While people will always ask what you do, I opt to pay more attention to how I choose to do it. I believe that the quality of our relationships remain the most valued measurement of our success. And as Maya Angelou said so well, people will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Thank you so much for this honor. It's a true privilege.